The message I'm going to preach on today is called Something I Have Missed Concerning the Pre-Tribulation Rapture of the Church. If you hear the word rapture, which is the return of the Lord for the believers and the resurrection of the dead in Christ, you probably have heard different opinions. We believe it could happen at any moment. Some people teach it's a long way away. Some teach that we are actually caught up in the middle of the seven-year tribulation, some at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Some have even said it's not really in the Bible. It was a doctrine that was invented in the 1800s at a prayer meeting with a group of people. Others are preterists, and they believe that uh, somehow the Lord returned in 70 AD. Don't know how we missed that one, but uh, that's how some people believe. In my research of many years, I've been in ministry now 47 years in the month of June 2023, there's three great things God has showed me that I want to just give you quickly. Number one is in the 1990s in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, we reenacted the Jewish wedding with 100 cast members. The revelation of the Jewish wedding is one of the greatest revelations of a pre-tribulation catching away that you will ever see. And you can get that through our ministry if you ask for the DVD of the Jewish wedding. Number two is in 2014, I began to see by revelation of the Spirit how that the church is still at Pentecost. The church age, the dispensation of the grace of God that we are now in is represented by the church age. We are at the feast of Pentecost, so to speak. The next feast coming is trumpets. And that's a picture of the rapture. So the rapture happens at the end of the church age or the end of the dispensation of the grace of God that then leads to the tribulation of the wrath of God. The third thing the Lord began to show me, and this is very important, was the seven festivals of Israel, how that they are in an order. You cannot put unleavened bread before Passover. You cannot put Pentecost before Passover. You cannot put atonement before trumpets. There is an order. You have Passover. You have uh, unleavened bread. You have first fruits. You have Pentecost. And you have trumpets, atonement. You have tabernacles. They can't change. So if we are in order, if we were to say that the tribulation is in the middle, I'm, I'm sorry, the rapture is in the middle of the tribulation or at the end, let me tell you what you have to do. Atonement, the, the, the time of atonement is a picture of the tribulation. You would have to throw the tribulation in front of trumpets. You cannot do that. You have to have trumpets. You have to have the sounding of the trumpets, the resurrection of the dead, the coronation of the king. Then you come into atonement, tribulation. Then you come into tabernacles, which is the kingdom of God that the Bible talks about. So uh, these are things the Lord began to show me. And then he showed me, I, I got all these letters. You can't find the rapture anywhere in the Old Testament. No, but you can find the patterns. And it's Exodus chapter 19. When the trumpet sounded loud and long, in Hebrew it's the Tekiya Hagodalah, and it says, and the Lord came down and Moses went up. Right there it is. And you have all these patterns in Exodus chapter 19 about the rapture. And then we, we find out that there's also an order in the book of Revelation, chapter 4. Uh, begin, let's say it this way. Chapter 1, 2, and 3 is the church or the church age. Chapter 4 is the transition where John is off of the earth. Now he's in heaven with the sounding of a shofar, a great trumpet blast. Come up hither, come up to the throne of God. Immediately he's in the throne room. That's a picture of the rapture. And if you take chapter 4, 1 through 2 and carry it all the way to the end of Jesus coming back to the earth at the end of the tribulation and when we know that's when he comes back to rule and reign that's revelation 19 then you begin to see that revelation is in a flow church age rapture tribulation return it's very basic. It doesn't take a genius to see that. So, and by the way, the book of Revelation is not all jumping around. It may appear to be, but John would say, after this I saw, after this I saw, after this. He's trying to say to you, this has a pattern to it. 42 months and 42 months. All right. So the order we're in right now is we're in the time of the dispensation of the grace of God, the church age, living at the festival of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the birthing of the church, the growth of the church. We will then come to the fall festivals, which in my opinion would be the rapture, then the tribulation, and then the kingdom age, which is presented by the festival of tabernacles. And there, there would be some here that would disagree, but we'll just agree to disagree on that one. But here's the insight I want to begin sharing with you. If you've never seen this, this is crazy. And it's how the number of seven is connected, not only in the entire cosmos of heaven and earth, but it's connected in prophecy, extreme very just extreme heavy now seven is a sacred number watch me that joins heaven and earth together i'll say it again seven is a number that is a divine 
sacred number that joins heaven and earth together. In Hebrew, the word seven, now seven in the English language is spelt with shin bet ein, and seven is found 463 times in the Bible. Seventh is found 120 times in the Bible, making a total of 583 times in some form the number seven is used. Seven is always, it doesn't change, it, what it represents and means, it means completion, it means to finish something, it means the end, it means the fullness of something. That is the meaning. You can't change it. It doesn't change. That's how it's been since God rested on the seventh day. Then there is something called prophetic weeks. Daniel 9, 27, he will confirm the covenant with many for one week. That is the Antichrist that's going to make a covenant with many nations connected with Israel. That word week does not mean seven days there. That Hebrew word Shavuah is also the the same Hebrew letter, Shin Bet Ain, and it comes out of seven, but it's not seven days, it's a period of seven years, and that's very clear from reading the book of Revelation. But notice this, this is so crazy. I'm going to show you some lists here that are absolutely amazing. First of all, the number of sevens that are connected to creation, all right? Now, there are seven days of creation. There are seven original planets in the time of Jesus. That we added the two later. There were only seven original planets. There were seven different continents on the earth. There are seven colors of a rainbow. There are seven different seas named by name on the planet earth. And there are also something called the seven wonders of the world. So the number seven is connected to creation things. Now, the number seven is also connected to everything that we talk about as human beings or connected to humans. Now watch what happens here. Okay, let's go to the next one, which are the seven, the sevens on human beings. There are seven openings in your head, two eyes, two nostrils, a mouth, and two ears, seven openings. There are seven cognitive abilities in all human beings. In time of death, there are seven, seven stages of grieving. There are seven stages that they have identified from the time of your birth to the time of your death. At seven months, a fetus can respond to stimuli. Uh, seven bones are, are in most mammals. Seven is the number that you can recall. You know why phone numbers are not eight or nine numbers? You could never remember them. The human brain can remember seven numbers. Four, two, three, three, four, five, six. Take out the area code, everybody's number is seven numbers. You know why? That's how many you can remember, you can put together without getting into uh, confusion. All right? Seven deadly sins are mentioned in Proverbs. Now this is interesting. Most people are married seven years before they divorce. Now, I tried to figure that one out. They get married seven years, then they start divorcing. I think they feel like they have completed. <laughs> Fullness of time. Time for another one. Come on, help me preach somebody. I, d I don't know why that one is, but they, they, they said, researchers have said that's true. Now look at the number of sevens that are connected to the nation of Israel. This one is very fascinating, and we're emphasizing again the number seven. For, don't, don't, don't forget where I am with this, emphasizing the number seven, and this is going to come into play on the part that I have missed about the pre-tribulation rapture. That's what we're teaching about. Okay, there are seven tribes that had to fight, that Israel had to fight when they entered the promised land. The book of Deuteronomy lists seven types of food that in the land of Israel. There are seven meals in a, uh, in a Jewish wedding for the bride. That's interesting. There are seven yearly festivals that Israel was established in the Torah. God established through them. There are seven uh, days each week and every seventh day is Shabbat or the Sabbath. Every seven years is called a Shemitah year. Uh, there are seven days for a Jewish wedding. There are seven branches on the menorah. There are seven times that the priests sprinkle blood on the, uh, on the ark. There are seven places where Christ shed his blood on his body. There are seven sayings he said from the cross. And in Deuteronomy three times, I'm sorry, Leviticus in three times, the Bible says if Israel sins, there would be seven times punishment. So he mentions that three times. Now, I didn't have a slide for this one, but the sickness cycles, the cycles of sickness is very, very interesting. In Leviticus chapter 13, if a person was a leper, they checked for the leprosy, put him in a room, and they watched them for seven days, and at the end of the seven to see if the leprosy had spread. In Leviticus 14.38, the leprosy that were on the walls of a house, you had to shut the house down for guess how many days, talk to me, seven days to return to see if it was a fretting or a spreading leprosy. Then, then there's also, there's an interesting one that in Leviticus 13 and 35, after seven days of being examined 
and the spots had disappeared, a leper was considered clean and could go back out in public. It even gets more interesting when you consider that smallpox, polio, tetanus, and other uh, shows their symptoms after seven days of getting it. Chicken pox and mumps after 14 days of getting it. I'm talking about showing the symptoms. Ebola after 21 days of getting it. Seven, 14, 21. Everything moves in the cosmos, in the universe and on earth is centered around the number seven. Are y'all starting to see this? Hey, Amen. Now, not only are these wonderful things in life that we talked about in food and Israel and weddings and the list we gave you, are they amazing? But here's the part that I want to show you. Judgment cycles in the Bible are based on the number seven. When Marion sinned against Moses, God separated her from the camp for seven days, Leviticus 12, 15. If you touched a corpse, according to Numbers 19, 14, you were considered to be unclean for seven days. Now, look at this, Jericho, the city of Jericho, they marched around it for seven days, blew seven trumpets from seven priests, and the walls fell flat. Judgment came to Jericho. In the time of the Old Testament, the fiery furnace in, Deut in Daniel chapter 319 was heated seven times hotter. King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 417, had a nervous breakdown and it was a judgment of God on him and he had it for a period of how long? Seven years. In Revelation, the judgments on the earth, seven vile judgments, come on, seven bowl judgments, seven trumpet judgments, the number seven just keeps on keeping on and showing up even in the patterns of the judgments. Now, here's where I want to go with this for the next few moments, and I want you to stay with me. I'm going to talk about the final seven that's alluded to in the Bible. Now that you have in your mind this imagery of the entire universe, the heavenly things, the earthly things, being connected to the number seven, maybe this helps explain why the tribulation is seven years. Because seven, at the end of it, represents fullness, represents completion. Come on, somebody. And so, not, three, not just three and a half years, not just one year, not just 14, 18 months, but cycles that end at the end of seven years. What happens at the tribulation period during that time? First of all, uh, it's, it's the seven-year conclusion of man's government on the earth. Man's rule is over. The kingdom of the world has become the kings of our God. The seven years is the last seven years of Daniel's 70th week in Daniel 9, 27. The seven years is the completion of the 6,000 years of human rule. So I'm trying to show you as we get ready to get deeper into this message that there is something I have missed about the number seven that you're about to hear. And if you're ready to hear it, give the Lord a praise right now. <laughs> Selah, let me breathe. <laughs> now, I don't know about you. This is amazing to me. All right? I, lo I love this kind of stuff. Okay, so here's what we believe. We believe, based on Daniel 9.27, based on the division of the book of Revelation, based on Jacob's trouble, which was working seven years for one wife, getting the wrong one, happened to work another seven years, that the tribulation is clearly a seven-year period. Now, some say the first part is the wrath of the Lamb. The second three and a half years is the wrath of God. And that you can see that in the writing of the book of Revelation. And others have different opinions about that. But seven years is definitely there. It's definitely clear. So let's ask ourselves this question. Why are we taken to heaven then before the tribulation? Now, let me stop right for a moment and, sh and, sh and share with you that there are people that have differences of opinion than me, but I hear people say like this, while the church has to be purged during the tribulation, ladies and gentlemen, your, the shedding of your blood can't get you salvation. Because the Bible said if Abel's blood, first righteous man killed, was sufficient, Christ would have not had to come, but there's another blood that speaks greater than Abel's. So me being beheaded or killed is not going to save me and make me more sanctified by going through the tribulation. There's some people that actually teach that. Others teach that the tribulation is to purge the church. You will not find that anywhere in the Bible. 
The tribulation is the judgment on the Gentile nations for rejecting the Lord. It's the judgment on the four sins mentioned in the book of Revelation. It is a time of the earth being judged. You read Isaiah 13, he's purging the sinners off the earth, not the saints. And there's so many scriptures like, pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. There's a verse like that. And you've got those, I will preserve you from the hour of testing which is coming upon the earth. I mean, we could go through all these scriptures. Nahum says he reserves his wrath for his enemies. I mean, there's so many scriptures out there. And you, if, you, if you're mid or post-trib, and I'm not jumping on you if you're that, that's your prerogative. You can believe that, but I'll just wave at you when I go in the rapture. But I mean, <laughs> I'm saying that as a joke, okay? That's a joke. Just trying to lighten up a few of you, okay? But, uh, <clears throat> but I will wave at you when I'm going in. <laughs> no, I hope we're all going. Somebody said they're pan trib. And I said, what's pan trib? They said, it's going to all pan out one way or the other. I don't, I don't know if it's mid tro I just, don't, I just know it's going to pan out. And I agree with that. I, I'm a little pan. We're going to all, we're going to figure it out one day. Okay. But I'm going to give you the common answers that people give as why we are taken in the coming of the Lord to heaven, and we are in heaven during so much of that tribulation period. Let's say it that way. Now, the first answer people say is, we're there to worship the Lamb. Very clearly, Revelation chapter 4 and 5, those chapters deal with, you have redeemed us out of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Worthy is the Lamb that has slain to redeem us. So there is a time of we are worshiping the Lord in heaven before we do anything. Else. Now, can you imagine what it's like in this room with 3,000 people and what's going to be like? with 100 million people praising God at one time. 200 million, 1 billion. Can, I can't even comprehend. I go to these football games like college games and I've been to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl is loud, man. It will deafen your ears. And that's why John said the praises of the people sounded like the voice of thunder and the voice of a waterfall. You ever been really close to a waterfall? It deafens you. And that praise is going to be almost deafening. I'm excited. Y'all better get used to praising God. Uh, you know, you better get used to doing it down here. Somebody needs to get some practice in down here before you get to heaven, okay? So now for those of you that are, and, and there are people, they're not, my wife's not an emotional person. She's very solid, but she's not an emotional person. So, uh, you know, for those folks who don't get as emotional as worship as some of us do, God's got you settled. The Bible said there's 30 minutes of silence in heaven. <laughs> He's going, God, God is an equal opportunity employer. He wants to make everybody happy. But I will tell you, when that 30 minutes is up, all heaven's going to break out. All heaven's going to break out. <laughs> okay, look at this. The second reason people say that we go into heaven before the tribulation is we have to appear at the judgment seat of Christ. That verse where it happens is Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, where it says, now is time, come the time to judge the nations, the prophets, the servants of God, and those who fear the Lord. That's called the Bema. That's called the judgment seat. Now, if you do not have my audio CD that talks about the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, I will never tell you get something that you need to hear. You don't hear me say that. I don't, I don't try to self-promote. I say, if you want it, fine, here it is. That is the greatest teaching God ever gave me on where the Bema happens. There is a massive building in heaven where all the records are kept, and I can prove it. And that's where, that's where Christ's throne is, where you stand before the Bema judgment seat of Christ. Now, with the worship in heaven is at the beginning of the tribulation, in Revelation chapter 4, chapter 5. But the Bema is in the middle of the tribulation. I'm talking about when the tribulation is going on in earth. Here's what's going on in heaven. And that's based on Revelation 11, 18, the context and the timing. Then we will participate. And in my other message today, I've got the coolest message on the banquet of the king, the marriage supper and the wedding that I've never preached in my life. And so we're going to hear that uh, later on in the conference, okay? So that is Revelation chapter 19. Now here, Bill, here's the principle I, I missed. And I knew it all along. And, and I think you'll love this, but I knew it. I knew it all along. It's like in the back of my head, I knew it. But the emphasis that the Lord began to give to me on this was very, very important. The overlooked principle about us being in heaven is called the Sabbath of rest. Seven Sabbaths, which now we're talking about kind of a year, a year, but the seven years, which are seven Sabbaths of sabbatical cycles that we are going to be in heaven during that seven. Now, I, I would say some of you have never heard what I'm about to get into because I had not thought of it this way. And I started looking at scriptures and I began to see how this pattern develops. Now, stay with me for just a moment while we talk about this. Everybody here knows that Shabbat 
uh, is the seventh day. Now, our calendar is different because we make Monday the first day of the week, Tuesday. That is not the original calendar. The original calendar was the first day of the week was Sunday, and Shabbat was the seventh day, which would have been on a Saturday. That's totally legit. There's, that's absolutely biblical, okay? But anyway, every seventh day was considered Shabbat or a time of rest. Shabbat is about resting. Would you agree with me? The animals rest, the people rest, you chill out, you get in God's presence, you have a family dinner together, you have a great time. Then you have what's called every seventh year is the Shemitah. Every seventh year, the, the land rested, the people rested, and God blessed you on the sixth year to have enough food on six, seven, and eight. It's an absolutely incredible pattern that's found in the Bible with that. There is something that I tapped into called the Grand Jubilee. Now, I, this, oh, this is another message. Lord, help me here because I don't want to get sidetracked. The Grand Jubilee is 490 years. Daniel's 70 weeks in Daniel chapter 9 is 70 multiplied seven times, ready, or 490 years. The tribulation on the last day sums up the 490 years. Now, you've heard me teach on this, that from the decree to rebuild Jerusalem till the crucifixion was 483 years. Sir Isaac Anderson proved that from Scotland Yard. He went into all the details. Now, watch. Seven years are missing. That's the gap of the church age. Church age ends, seven years of tribulation, but you have to add those seven years into that 483 and you get 490. Guess what happens at the end of 490? The kingdom of God comes down to earth. Jesus returns, Messiah returns at the end of the 490. And that'll be the end of the tribulation. And that's called the grand jubilee. And every hair on my body just stood up when I said that phrase. The grand jubilee, are you still, are you still here? Folks, we're about to get into the heavy stuff. Put your hands together while we are about to get into the heavy stuff right here at the International Prophetic Summit. Now you can hear the latest word on the last days that reveals details of where we are now and what and where major events will happen in the near future from the world's leading prophetic teachers. The 2023 Prophetic Summit is now available to everyone on 13 CDs or on 13 DVDs and also available on an audio flash drive. Here are the speakers and their messages. Jonathan Kahn explained how the demon gods have returned. Lance Walnow used a whiteboard and taught, this is about to change everything. And also the eye-opening message, heaven is about to do an earth invasion. Mark Biltz used Hebrew charts and pictures to illustrate his messages called Connecting the Dots and one called The Stunning Harbingers of Things to Come. Bill Cloud, a master of Hebrew, taught on the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of idolatry. He also revealed the secret of repairing the breach. Jimmy Evans took us on a fascinating journey from the 1800s to this present age, explaining the timeline of prophetic events. Now, here's what I did. I used numerous scriptures and pictures to illustrate these five messages. Something I have missed concerning the pre-tribulation rapture. The next message was called the secret of the wedding and the marriage of the king. You will also hear in this series the fascinating revelation from the book of Daniel called the future millennial events and the first 75 days when Jesus rules on earth. You will also discover amazing details when Christ returns to earth in the message, White Lightning, the King Messiah and his battle map. In my fifth message, discover the four biggest things that will happen just before the rapture of the church. Now, you will enjoy 13 hours, imagine that, 13 hours of dynamic prophetic teaching that will leave you encouraged, excited, and informed about the last days. The CD album is $65, and the offer number for that is 23PS-CD. The DVD album is $95, and that offer number is 23PS-DVD. Now, the DVDs will have all the pictures and the PowerPoints and the scriptures that were on the screens. Don't forget that. The audio flash drive is also available for $65 by requesting it and using offer number 23PS-USB. You can call toll-free at 1-888-21-BREAD or order online at our website at perrystone.org or send the offer number and send us a note with the check to Perry Stone Ministries, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. I can guarantee you this. 
This is going to be the best prophetic series in the 47-year history of our ministry. You will be prepared. You will be informed. You will know the times and seasons, and you will know what to do. So go ahead and order the 13 CDs or the DVD album or the 13 messages that are on the audio flash drive and do it today. God bless you. During my 46, well, about 47 years of, of ministry, I've heard literally tens of thousands of messages personally on tape, on television, and so forth. Never, and I'm saying this very sincerely and honestly, have I ever heard a combination of teaching that was more important for a season that we are in than this International Prophetic Summit. If you are concerned about the future and you want to know where things are going, and you want to know what to do about it, this is a conference of 13 hours, over 13 hours of teaching that I hope that you will invest in for your future. And the information there was on the screen. We'll show it one more time. And please um, get, uh, we have three different ways you can hear it. And we hope that you choose one of those. And let me just remind you that if you want to keep manifest on the air in your area, that this is one of the ways that you do it is supporting the resources. We also want to tell you that it's very, very important, if you can, to come and join us in some of our regional meetings and especially our main event, which is coming up in October. I'm coming now to our big conference at the Billtown Road uh, World Prayer Center in Lou Louisville, Kentucky. It's called the Evangel World Prayer Center, Pastor Bob Rogers. And I'm going to be preaching Thursday night, two services Friday and Saturday, and two services on Sunday, July 20th through the 23rd. There's no registration. There's no fee to attend. You just need to be a part. Bring your whole family for that. We're going to go up to Alaska. Pam and I will be at Trinity Christian Center July 30th through August the 3rd. Pastor Sherry Morris. And then we're going to hop on over to... We actually drive, we don't hop, to uh, Wasilla, Alaska at the brand new church, uh, King's Chapel, Pastor Daniel Bracken. And I want to tell you, I'm looking forward to ministering in that church. We've been in the old church when you, it was so packed and the parking was so packed, you couldn't get people in. And now we, we have a, oh, it's going to be fun. Daniel, it's going to be fun, brother. And we want everybody from that area to join us. Family Faith Church, Willis Campus, August 18th through the 19th, and the Huntington uh, campus of Faith uh, uh, Family Faith Church on August the 20th, Christ Temple, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, August the 25th to 27th, Gateway Church in Russellville, Alabama. Never been there. Been wanting to go there for years, so you come and join me. September the 10th, Oak Grove, Arkansas. You guys are so great to come out down there from the Branson area. This is near Branson, Missouri, in that area. Uh, that's going to be September the 20th, one service only. So, parrystone.org, get the information. Register for the main event while we have a few seats available. And then don't forget to join us in these conferences and also Perry Stone Ministries Facebook page. God bless you. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2023 Israel tour. The dates are November 19th through the 28th. There is also an optional tour to the country of Jordan that includes Petra and much more. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today.